Hi everybody, it is uh, December 8, 2018. Our winter storm has a name, Diego. And this is what it looked like earlier this afternoon. And this is what it looks like now. So they have, well, it looks like they just um, squeezed it so that it bunches together. Uh, it is so highly manipulated and I'm going to show you those manipulations and if I did record many of them but you can see the extremely low frequencies right here all of the straight lines but they're using extremely low frequencies high frequency heating along with microwaves you see this very straight line but then you see the what look like Wi-Fi rings let me stop it and let me bring it up closer right here microwaves the sawtooth edges microwaves extremely low frequencies microwaves right over here and if you go through this storm you will see microwaves all over microwaves extremely low frequencies extremely low frequencies these uh, faded green straight edged defined lines are the extremely low frequencies and all of these ripples are microwaves this thing is so juiced up microwaves microwaves and extremely low frequencies uh, there's no telling what this is going to do and those of you in this area from let's see uh, Texas and Oklahoma you see all of the extremely low frequencies right here coming out of it's south of Mena and here it is the extremely low frequencies that I believe they are using to keep this from heading north and I'll show you that in just one second but all of these frequencies uh, I will tell you that buzzing right now in my ear is getting really very annoying. Uh, microwaves. So, just wanted to tell those who don't know what to look for the signatures microwaves right in here all of what look like these ripples in the precipitation those are the microwaves so I hope I hope that this is a dud here's an extremely low frequency and they are just shooting out all over the place with microwaves. Now the Nectarad Harp Ring that I saw earlier may be gone. And if it's gone, I captured it. So for, uh, microwaves down here. Let me pause you and bring it up. Here it is. these concentric defined rings that comes from your Nexrad radar stations 
and you have the extremely low frequencies that are being used with the high frequencies. The high frequencies, look at all of the concentric rings. Okay, so this is in um, Texas. And, well, it just does not... portend very good news. They said that areas of Texas and other states could have tornadoes. Well, when you see those Nexrad harp rings, they can create tornadoes. And they usually occur in the center of that of that ring. So we're looking at It has to, I have to zoom it out first. This whole thing is so unbelievably fried with frequencies. But it is, uh, Midland area, Odessa, and the surrounding area, if there are going to be tornadoes. I wouldn't be surprised if they occur in this area. Uh, I am not a meteorologist, obviously, and you cannot... Um, I am literally guessing. So, now we don't have those next red rings but we sure do have an awful lot of frequencies anyway. And light snow, lots of sleet up here, North Texas. Look how this blows up. They are holding this down. This is not Mother Nature. This is man. When you see these weather patterns, it's just, it's, sitting there. It's not moving. And you can see that it becomes quite defined at the top. That's not how Mother Nature works. That's how frequencies work. But this entire thing is blowing up into snow. Um, and it's literally, it's holding in place. It doesn't go anywhere, but I can now see another. Yeah, another next red. High frequency heating right on up here. Look at all of the microwaves. Yep. Okay, well. <laughs> You know, we knew, we know our weather is controlled. It really is very unfortunate that we can't get through to others because they are using this to bring about an awful lot of suffering. And we have seen that suffering for years. And more and more Americans are being knocked out, their homes destroyed, their lives destroyed. due to weather being used as a weapon. So, highly, highly, highly fried is this storm that they are bringing upon all of us. Uh, let me see. I hope it's still... Yes, it is. Okay, the high-frequency heating that I showed you the concentric Nexrad radar rings. It's high frequency heating of the ionosphere. So that's why you're seeing all of this area turning red. Right down here.
the uh, yes we still have this beam okay so look at what we've got out of is that Arkansas this beam it's pushing this down it's keeping this from going further north north sorry and look how it, it gets very defined along the boundary of Tennessee once it's hit and then we have this beam shooting off they can use these lasers, extremely low frequencies, to steer storms. To st they can use it to manipulate the jet stream. So when you see all of these articles, you know, First article I'll show you, North Carolina governor declares emergency over impending snowstorm. You cannot tell me that this guy does not know that the weather is controlled. And don't you love it? Before the storm even hits states, you've got all of these governors. They declare states of emergency the minute they hear that a storm has been forecasted to hit their state. That's not anything that we had ever lived before. Um, four things to know about Winter Storm Diego. It will bring a variety of precipitation as it tracks east. This storm will not pull away from the United States until next week. Heavy snow and ice are concerns in several areas. Diego will likely take a southerly track and not impact the northeast. Hey, fabulous. Thank you. One of the biggest uncertainties with Winter Storm Diego is where and when exactly the different types of precipitation will fall. Small changes in the track of this system, along with small differences in temperature, both at the surface and aloft, can mean big changes in the forecast. So they don't know they just don't know anymore. Many locations will see an evolution in precipitation types throughout the storm. So when you have all of these frequencies working a storm, extremely low frequencies, microwaves, and the next rad Doppler stations, all of these frequencies can affect the atmosphere and can produce changes in the temperature. I think that that is why they are unable to really forecast what is taking place. So they're covering their butts by just saying, well, this could happen and maybe this could happen and maybe, and maybe it won't happen and maybe it will happen. And Unbelievable. Due to this slow movement, many locations will see an extended period of precipitation, especially in the southeast. High temperatures Monday will likely be stuck in the 30s for much of North Carolina and upstate South Carolina. Lows on Tuesday morning will drop into the 20s, which means, yeah, slow melting of the snow and ice. And they're calling for power outages. Crippling ice storm is not currently anticipated, but even small ice accumulations can cause slippery roads, damage to tree branches, and power outages. Power outages. They happen here. I think that they just turn the power off. But I've lived through four already in a little over a year. And it's painful. <laughs> it's painful because I don't have anything to do 
and I don't have friends. I don't, I, I don't, you know, so it's really just, whew, all right, keep going, keep going. Uh, when it's this cold, yeah, it's not going to be fun. Spoke to an elderly tenant here who can't even think about the possibility of power outages because it sends her blood pressure too high and then she gets a really bad headache and it so stresses her out that she can't even talk about it. Um, yeah, listen to this. A broad strip from eastern New Mexico. This is not the kind of storms that we ever had, okay? Now we have, on a regular basis, like storms that go on for 1,000 or 1,500 miles from uh, the south of the United States, the way south, the Gulf, all the way on up into Canada on a regular basis now. And that doesn't even beg questions in anybody's minds. These storms, look how it is being held in place. New Mexico, uh, the close to the panhandle of Texas, it is being held in place. Slow moving, slow moving deliberately caused by man, not mother nature. And they are making sure that this goes. It's south east direction. Because they do want to bring an awful lot of damage to all of us, but now, you know, we had the California fires, and now, oh well, before that, we had the hurricanes, right? We had, well, how do you even remember everything? The hurricanes in Florida, and then the bizarre hurricanes in Arizona, um, the hurricanes this summer, North Carolina, South Carolina. Northeast, you're going to get hit hard, I think, this winter. But they're making sure that the Southeast and Texas get hit hard. And they're going to hold it. And there will be flash flooding. And there will be, I think, quite a bit of damage from this. This has not moved. Oh, man, you know... So this broad strip from eastern New Mexico all the way, oh my God, to North Carolina, South Carolina, it, New Mexico through the Ozarks into the southeast. It's a broad strip of having at least a low probability of experiencing 0.1 inch or more of ice accumulation within this broad area. There are several pockets that may see at least a quarter inch of ice. Uh, and that's the threshold for tree damage and power outages. Western Texas into northern Arkansas. The other pockets, North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, far northeast. Georgia. Threat of heavy snow and ice. Uh, oh my God, listen to this. Um, the National Weather Service in Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, they said it's a once in a generation event for areas that experience mostly snow and ice. It's this forecasting is just, that really should wake people up. Well, look, people are just too zombified. Um, there is no waking people up. Yeah, some people uh, wake up, but it takes years to really get what is happening here. Soaking rain may trigger flooding from Texas to the southeast into the weekend. 
and you can read all of the areas, Deep South, Gulf Coast, uh, Georgia, North Florida, South Georgia, North Florida, um, from Texas to Georgia, flash flooding, river flooding. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, I will link below to this article, Weather Modification by Carbon Dust, Absorption of Solar Energy. Okay, I'm doing this because I will be posting a video, maybe even later, just to show you. Uh, <laughs> the black carbon dust that has been dumped in this area, Anderson, South Carolina, and they use that to modify the weather. So what can carbon dust absorption of solar energy do? Well, it can uh, increase the heat. It can, it's an artificial heat source. It can also create bigger clouds. Um, here, makes clouds bigger. And it can enhance rainfall. It could reduce the intercore hurricane intensity. However, everything that you see that it can do that could prevent destruction, they can cause the destruction. So it can reduce the intensity or it can enhance the intensity. Uh, the cumulonimbus nimbus enhancement, um, it can alter cyclones. It can dissipate fog. It can accelerate snow melt. And, you know, our government has, there's an awful lot of evidence that our government has been very interested in black carbon dust, and that's why we see so much black carbon. What is this, modifying the direction of the path of a jet stream? What? You mean what I was saying about they being able to manipulate the jet stream? It's true. Yes, it's true. It's absolutely true. This is, well, let's just do weather modification by artificial satellites first. And I'm not going through everything that they can do, just an, an example. Uh, they can modify cooling or warming or precipitations of selected regions of the Earth. They can increase electricity production on land directly from concentrated solar energy. They can warm a local region. Think about those heat waves. They can cause rapid heating. Rapid heating. How do they do this? Oh, computers. They can modify local weather. They can bring about special desired weather requests. We've got weather modification commercial companies that provide services to people who can afford a, well, if you're getting married and you can afford a weather modifying company to make sure that that day is sunny, there are companies out there that do this desired local weather at discrete time and locations. Most remarkable of all is that these and many other tasks can all be accomplished by switching between some computer codes. Switching between some computer codes. That's all it takes. 
cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere, localized heating, modification of the steering winds that influence weather phenomena. They can influence the charge distribution in mesocyclones, lightning. They can either create or uh, protect, break up, localized heating of the atmosphere, modifying the direction of the jet stream. Tornadoes can be prevented and tornadoes can be created. They can generate heated air regions and generate acoustic waves, gravity waves in the atmosphere for weather modification purposes. So when you see these inane forecasts, well, uh, if warm here air comes in and the temperature just changes slightly, well, that can change everything. Man can change the temperature. Atmospheric heating and all of these methods, weather modification of tornadoes and of the jet stream heating the cold, rainy downdrafts, influencing hurricanes and typhoons by influencing position of the jet stream and the behavior of atmospheric gravitation waves. Nuclear reactors. Any large perturbation in the local atmospheric velocity, velocity field at the geographic poles has the potential of affecting weather patterns. Using heat from nuclear reactors opens up the possibility of benign global weather control. Well, they can also create weather that is very damaging, very damaging. So here's another Weather modification using carbon black. And this is uh, proposed by Phillips Laboratory, sent to our government. Capability, the uses of carbon black to increase precipitation, to decrease precipitation, to increase cirrus cloud cover. And there's one more document that I want to find. Well, this isn't it, but I came across it. History of Air Force weather modification, um, clearing of super cooled fog in the 50s and 60s. Hole clearing with carbon black, 50s and 60s. Hole clearing with silver iodide, 50s through 70s. Hole clearing by helicopter and the Ho Chi Minh Trail muddying by weather modification in the 60s and 70s. How can we have the American people? How is it possible that these Americans just won't even consider having a conversation when we have mountains of evidence that they are doing just what we are telling them? Black carbon semi-direct effects on cloud cover. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's very upsetting because an awful lot of people will be having to suffer the results. Here is it. Here's the document. Those concentric, very defined rings that you saw, that is the high frequency heating of the ionosphere. Couple that with these extremely low frequencies, and you can cause earthquakes, cyclones, localized heating, and you can create weather. You can steer the jet stream. But 
high frequency ionospheric heaters, it's not just hard. That's what our NEXRAD radar, those Doppler stations, do. And when you see that, you know that those storms are manufactured by man. And what else? Stratospheric engine, geoengineering with black carbon aerosols. All right. I will link below to everything if I can find it because all of this was on uh, my hard drive. I hope that they still have these um, documents, these papers. If they don't, that's why I didn't link to it. There's no telling what will happen. But if any of you are now experiencing an awful lot of weather, I heard from two subscribers who live uh, in Houston or around Houston. One said they did get a lot of rain and I guess sleet and two people died in car accidents already. Another one said that uh, it was drizzling and another one actually, but I can't remember exactly what she said. So you guys, are you getting an awful lot of rain? You look like you're being hammered. Uh, South Texas, Houston area. You got to tell us what's happening, because just seeing this, it doesn't, it doesn't really. I have gone to the satellite or radar, and I see precipitation over Anderson, South Carolina, and nothing's happening. Nothing. Is it the aerosol spraying, all of the chemtrails? Because those are the days when there is thick cloud covering from horizon to horizon. So they may have prevented the precipitation from falling down. It's so sad to me that we are living what we are living. It's profoundly frustrating, terminally frustrating, and sometimes maddening that you face your fellow Americans. You know you're at war. You face your fellow Americans, and they don't care. Or, you know, they just do the, oh, you're crazy. Like they're, forget about seventh grade. I've decided it's more uh, fifth grade behavior. I really do hope that everybody stays safe. All links are below.